Hi there. Welcome to our final lesson in this series on gravity and mechanical energy. In our previous lesson, we looked at a pendulum and showed how kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy are related to each other. In this lesson, we are going to have a final look at objects falling in the gravitational field. We are going to carefully examine how kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy change for any object falling in a gravitational field. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy of falling objects are related. Use this relationship to carry out calculations on falling objects. Let's begin with another look at a familiar experiment, dropping a ball from a given height. When the ball is dropped, it accelerates uniformly downwards due to the gravitational force field. Let's examine what happens to the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy of this ball during its fall. For these calculations, we will assume that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second downwards. At the start, Time equals zero seconds. This ball has a mass of 100 grams and is held 20 meters above the ground. The ball takes two seconds to fall. We want to find out the values of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy at half second time intervals. To start with, let's focus on the gravitational potential energy of the ball. Remember, we use the equation EP equals MGH to find this. Can you find the EP before the ball is released? Check your answer with mine. At the start, the ball has a gravitational potential energy of 0, 0,1 times 10 times 20, which gives me an answer of 20 joules. Now notice that the mass and the acceleration due to gravity, g, remains constant. The only variable that changes while the ball falls is the height above the ground. To find the height at each different times while the ball was falling, we will first need to use one of the equations of motion to find the displacement of the ball from its initial position. I have selected the equation, displacement, s, equals the initial velocity, u, times time, t, plus half times the acceleration due to gravity, g, times time squared. But since the initial velocity was zero, the equation is simply s equals half g t squared. Can you fill in the displacement, the height and the gravitational potential energy values for the ball's fall? Let's analyze the completed table of values together. Notice, after 0, 0,5 seconds, the ball has fallen 1,25 meters. It is now 18,75 meters above the ground, so has 18,75 joules of gravitational potential energy. After one second, the ball has fallen 5 meters downwards. It is now 15 meters above the ground and has a gravitational potential energy of 15 joules. Notice the potential energy has decreased more in the second half second than in the first. After 1,5 seconds, the ball has fallen 11,25 meters. The ball is now 8,75 meters above the ground and has a gravitational potential energy of 8,75 joules. The decrease in the potential energy is even greater now. At 2 seconds, the ball strikes the ground and the gravitational potential energy is zero. In the last half second, the potential energy of the ball decreased the most. Now, to see the change of potential energy with time more clearly, let's draw a line graph. Notice these values of gravitational potential energy do not form a straight line. This means that the potential energy does not decrease at a constant rate. Notice that in the first second, which is half the time for the fall, the decrease in potential energy is only 5 joule. But in the second, the potential energy decreased by 15 joule. Did you notice that the gradient of the graph is not steep at first, but increases with time?
So by looking at the graph, we can clearly see that the EP does not decrease in a constant or linear manner for the time taken for the ball to fall. Now, let's have a look at the way in which the kinetic energy of the ball changes during the same time intervals. Let's write down what we know. We know that to calculate kinetic energy, we use the equation EK equals half mv squared. The mass of the ball is 0, 0,1 kilograms. But we don't know the velocity at each of the half second time intervals. Can you think how to find the velocity at each of these times? Remember, we know that the ball accelerated downwards at 10 meters per second squared. Think about what this means and see if you can work out the velocities without using an equation. Try to explain your thinking to a friend and check out this explanation. Well, a uniform acceleration of 10 meters per second squared means that the velocity of the ball is changing by the same amount for each second or time interval. So, in the first second, it would increase by 10 meters per second. In half the time, 0, 0,5 seconds, the increase would be half of 10 meters per second. That is, 5 meters per second. This change would be the same for each half second of the ball's fall. I filled my results in on this table. Check your results against mine. Starting from 0, the velocity of the ball would increase by 5 to 5 meters per second after 0, 0,5 seconds, and then increase by 5 again to be 10 meters per second at 1 second. At 1,5 seconds, the velocity is 15 meters per second, and at 2 seconds, the velocity is 20 meters per second. Now, can you calculate the kinetic energy of the ball and fill these values in on the table? Compare your answers to this table. Notice, the kinetic energy of the ball increased by 1,25 joules in the first half second, but increased more in the second half second. The biggest increase in kinetic energy was in the last half second, when the EK increased from 11,25 joules to 20 joules. What type of line graph do you expect for the kinetic energy of the ball? Well, this looks interesting. The graph shows that the kinetic energy is increasing with time. Notice how the gradient of this line increases. This is not a linear relationship. This looks similar to the relationship between gravitational potential energy and time. Let's compare these graphs by placing them on the same axis. Notice how these graphs have the same shape. They both look like parts of a parabola. But notice the directions of the curves are different. The gravitational potential energy decreases from 20 joules to 0 joules in 2 seconds, while the kinetic energy increases from 0 to 20 joules after 2 seconds. But have a closer look here. At 1 second, the EP has decreased by 5 joules. But the EK has increased by 5 joules. Do you think this relationship holds true for other values? Do a few calculations to check this out. Look here. I have completed a table to show the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy of the ball while it is falling. I have added these together and found that the total is always the same. 20 joules. Remember, we call the sum of EP and EK the mechanical energy. Can you see that the mechanical energy of the ball remains constant? We can show this on a graph too. Look, the mechanical energy remains the same for the whole time the ball is falling. This illustrates one of the most important laws of physics. The law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy states that the total amount of energy remains constant. We say energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. Now, we can use this relationship between potential energy and kinetic energy to confirm the very first experiment we did. Remember, we showed that the balls of different mass dropped from the same height 
at the same time took the same time to fall. Let's use our graph and the law of conservation of energy to confirm this. Have a look here. Where the two graphs intersect, the values of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy are the same. Now, because mechanical energy is always conserved, when any object falls, there will always be one point at which the kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy. Let's say the mass of an object is m. So we can write the expression for gravitational potential energy for the object as Ep equals mgh. And kinetic energy can be written as E k equals half m v squared. Now these two are equal, so we can actually write m g h equals half m v squared. But notice the variable m is the same on both sides of this equation, so I can divide both sides by m. This gives me g h equals half v squared. Now I can divide both sides by h to get g equals half v squared over h. So what does this strange expression tell us? Well, g is only dependent on the velocity squared and on the height of the object. Remember, we showed this in lesson one by doing the experiment with the different balls. Now, I want you to go and investigate another relationship involving the mechanical energy of falling objects. Here's your task for today. Draw a graph to show how the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy of a ball dropped from 40 meters changes with its height above the ground. In this graph, the independent variable is the height of the object above the ground. This is drawn on the horizontal axis. Energy is the dependent variable and is drawn on the vertical axis. Now, use your graph to describe the relationship between kinetic energy and height. Remember, you can use the law of conservation of mechanical energy to find any unknown values you may need. In this series on gravity and mechanical energy, we have been able to apply our knowledge of motion to some new situations and have discovered some interesting things about the way things fall and the reason why they fall. We have also learned that in physics, everyday words like work and weight have particular meanings. We have been able to show special relationships and use equations to solve some real-life problems. We have laid the foundation of some very important principles of physics. These principles can be seen all around us. Here's a challenge for you. Look around you. See if you can identify some of the things that we have learnt about. Goodbye. Yeah.